Shane Warne's passing away firstly comes as a, a shock to me, not just as a cricket journalist, as a cricket fan, uh, but also because I shared a very close personal relationship with him. That personal relationship started when uh, he was a player and I was covering him as a cricket journalist. I had the opportunity of interviewing him a few times, but uh, the friendship became a bit closer once he retired. So uh, uh, quite often we would be in touch over messages when he was taking up any media assignment in India and he would consult me in terms of you know what this media assignment is looking like what is the media house and how else uh, should he go about you know taking those media assignments uh, once uh, listening to the news I, I was just going through those old messages that I had exchanged over the years with with Shane so so I could call him not just as as a subject that I covered as a cricket journalist but as a close friend as well uh, so this news does come as a big shock to me if I was to just sum up Shane Warne, the cricketer, uh, he was selected by a Wisden, you know, which is also called the Bible of Cricket, as five greatest cricketers of the century. Many might just argue that he was the greatest. Quite often we pick batsmen as being the greatest players. But when you look at bowlers, the kind of impact that he had, the number of Man of the Match awards that he had, Man of the Series awards he had, what that tells you is that Shane Warne just didn't pick a wicket or two and contributed to his team's success. He was actually the fulcrum, the catalyst that took that Australian team to a lot of very famous victories. Uh, in terms of that delivery, that, that title of ball of the century will always remain with Shane Wan. The one that he bowled to Mike Gatting, uh, pitched really outside the leg stump and then turned very sharply to get uh, the off stump of Mike Gatting out. Mike Gatting was shocked, as was anyone who was watching it on TV. That ball is called the ball of the century, the first ball that he ever bowled in the Ashes series. Off the field, he had a bit of a bad boy sort of an image. Now, he was a rebel of sort, but he made no bones about it. He was happy in his skin. He was happy being the personality that he was because he knew that to be what he was off the field also then helped him be the best on the field. And kudos then to the Australian management to allow him to be like that. Uh, I think if I had to uh, coin one sentence and remember Shane Warne, I'll just say that in an era where batsmen were very cool, in an era where fast bowlers were very cool, Shane Warne made spin bowling very cool and from there on inspired many a youngsters to take the art of spin bowling. He for me was an out and out magician with the ball. If there's one particular legacy that if I look back at Shane Warne that he left behind, when you look back at his glorious career, uh, yes, of course, you'll talk about the 700 plus wickets that he picked up in Test cricket, the 1,000 plus wickets that he got in international cricket. But but few things that really stand out. One, in an era of uh, you know batsmen being uh, the superstars or the fast bowlers really hogging all the limelight. Shane Warne made spin bowling very cool. He actually inspired a lot of youngsters to take on spin bowling, not just leg spin bowling, but also uh, off spin bowling and made that spin bowlers can also be the poster boys of cricket. That's what Shane Warne did. He had a swag when he walked onto the field that everyone wanted to emulate. If I, if I can think of a few other cricketers that I can draw a parallel in terms of the aura uh, that Shane Warne had, Viv Richards probably is another guy who comes to mind. So I'm really comparing them when it comes to that. Uh, many say that you know he was the bowler who had a lot of guile, would set up batsmen as he would do very well. But how would he be successful in T20 cricket? To those people, I'll say, just go and look at the record of the IPL. The first very season of the IPL, he captained a very underrated Rajasthan Royals team that was devoid of any superstars. But what he did, took those youngsters under his wing and took, I beg your pardon, Rajasthan to the first IPL title. That told you that Shane Warne probably was the greatest captain that Australia never had.